Hello and welcome to the 741 channel. Thank you for stopping by. Today I'm going to be installing this diamond dual band antenna on my 2007 Chevy Suburban. So I already have a 2 meter 5 8 wave ham radio antenna mounted on this Suburban. And I'm not having any problems with the antenna other than the fact that it's just too long. And this thing won't fit in my garage without the antenna hitting the rafters. So I decided to get something a little bit shorter and that's where the diamond antenna comes in. So let's get it out of the package and take a quick look at it before I get it mounted on the Suburban. So here's a look at the antenna. Now you can see first off, it's the silver version. This does come in black too. And in fact, I wanted the black one and accidentally ordered the silver one by mistake. I don't feel like dealing with trying to return it. So I'm just gonna use this one on the Suburban. Should look just fine. So I think Diamond has a few different mount options for this antenna. I chose the NMO mount because that's what I've got on the Suburban. You can see at the bottom, this is presumably a loading coil of some kind in here. And then you can see here, this is just a tapered mount and then the standard whip. But in the middle of the whip, there is a little bit of a coil here. And then of course, with the antenna, we get some instructions and a little Allen wrench. So I made another detailed video that shows the whole installation process of the two meter radio and actually CB radio that I put in the Suburban. And that includes the mounting of the antenna brackets and the running of the coax. So if you need to see that detail and wanna watch that video, there'll be a link up here and down in the description. So since I've already got all the bracketry and everything I need, this is gonna be a pretty straightforward installation. All I have to do is pull the old antenna off just threads out like that. And here's a quick look at the old antenna in case you're interested. I don't know if this thing had a name brand or anything. I got it at a ham fest about 20 years ago. And like I said, it still works perfectly fine. Just too big. I'm not really sure if it would be a problem on this antenna. The base here seems to be some kind of chrome or maybe nickel plated metal. But in the past, I've had some issues with dissimilar metal issues where corrosion will build up on these mounts. And then the antenna is almost impossible to remove from the mount. So in order to combat that, I'm gonna grab some of this Never Seize and put just a very small amount on the threads here before I thread this on. And just for the record, this can is about 50 years old. This used to be my dad's. There's probably about a third of it left. So a little bit goes a long way. So now I'll just thread this on and get it as tight as I can. So here's a look at the full length of the antenna. You can see it's about three feet high, about the same as that CB antenna that's over there on the other fender. So now let's take a look at the SWR on this antenna. So I'm gonna be using my MFJ 259C antenna analyzer to check this. Now, unfortunately, this doesn't cover 70 centimeters and I don't have an SWR meter that does. So I'm not gonna be able to check how it's working on 70 centimeters today. But in my case, that's not gonna be a problem because I don't have a 70 centimeter radio in this car. So I'll only be looking at two meters today. But the procedure would be pretty much the same if you were gonna adjust an antenna to work on 70 centimeters as it does on two. The only difference might be is that one band might be a little better than the other and you may have to make some decisions on on which band you want to tune the antenna to be best on. So as I said earlier in the video, I did make a separate video that details the installation of the radios in here, but I figured I'd give you a quick look at how the radios are installed in case you haven't seen that video. Anyway, what I've done is disconnected the coax from the back of the two meter radio, which you can see right here. It's a Yezu FTM 3200. So I disconnected the antenna coax from the back of the radio and I brought it over here to my analyzer, which as I mentioned is an MFJ 259. C. So as you can see, I've got the analyzer in the two meter band and everything's looking pretty good so far right around in the middle of the band. We're getting about a 1.1 SWR. If I tune up to the high end of the band, you can see it's gone up to about 1.2. And if I go down to the low end of the band, you can see it's 1.0. Now if I tune down below the two meter band, you can see the SWR stays at 1.0 all the way down to about 142 megahertz or so. So the antenna is actually pretty good as it is. I probably don't even really need to touch it. It's gonna work just fine the way that it is. But just for the sake of the video and showing off the tuning process, I'll see if I can adjust it a little bit and just get that section of bandwidth where the SWR was 1.0 up just a little bit higher so it's right in the middle of the two meter band. So because the analyzer showed that the SWR was flat, a little bit below the frequencies for the two meter band that tells me that the antenna is just slightly too long and that to tune it we need to just shorten it a little bit now the way that i'm going to do that is i'm going to grab this little allen wrench that was supplied with the kit and i'm going to loosen up the two set screws that are in the base here and then i'll just slide the whip down into the base a little bit further 
tighten it up and we'll check it out, see what it looks like. So just so you guys can see the set screws, I've loosened the antenna a little bit so I can turn them into view. Now I'm just going to loosen these guys up. I'm going to hold on to the whip as I loosen the second one in case it wants to drop. That way I can control how much I'm going to shorten it. So in this case, the whip was already at the bottom of its travel. I can't make it any shorter without cutting it. So if I really wanted to get crazy here, I could pull the whip out of here and I could cut a little bit off the end and then put it back in and see what happens. But I think the SWR was good enough as it was. So I'm just going to put it back where it was at the bottom of its travel tighten it up and use it like it is. So one other feature of this antenna that I almost forgot about because I don't really need it, but you might, is the fact that this antenna can tilt over in case even this one is too long for your vehicle to fit in your garage or some other place. So there's two things you have to do to tilt this over. The first is to remember to do it before you drive into a low garage or something like that. And then come over to the antenna and grab it right where the whip goes into the base here and then just pull straight up on it. It's spring loaded and you'll see it kind of come up and then just tilt it over. And it'll kind of stay tilted over like that. I wouldn't drive at any speed with it tilted over like this because it'll tend to want to spring right back up, but you can ease into a garage or some other low hanging spot if you need to. So that's pretty much gonna wrap things up for installing this Diamond Dual Band Ham Radio on my 2007 Chevy Suburban. If you wanna learn more about this antenna, there'll be a link down in the description below. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to leave a comment or subscribe, feel free to do that as well. If you'd like to support my channel in another way, please consider visiting my Amazon store, which is linked in the description below. Thanks for watching.